Good morning. This is Keloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. Day two of the Summit League basketball tournament will feature both SDSU men's and women's teams competing today at the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls. You'll want to stay with Keloland News on air and online for a complete championship coverage. Check out our Summit League page here on Keloland.com where you can follow the action with bracket standings, tweets, and photos throughout the five-day tournament. Lawmakers in Pier have submitted around three dozen bills this year that deal with South Dakota elections. The issues range from post-election audits to voter registration rules. Attorney General Marty Jackley supported two of the measures. One will let him prosecute people for perjury who lie about the petition process. The other is Senate Bill 207, which would bolster the ban on the inappropriate use of taxpayer dollars. If a politician inappropriately uses taxpayer dollars to influence an election, uh, they would be able to be prosecuted for that. And, and so it's, it's mainly a deterrent value. But again, we've had instances in South Dakota where that's happened. And this now gives the attorney general the ability to investigate it and prosecute it. Jackley says overall he's pleased with the changes lawmakers are making to South Dakota elections. Plans are moving forward to remove what's left of the gymnasium that collapsed in Inwood, Iowa back in January. A buildup of snow and ice caused the roof to cave in. Fortunately, no one was hurt. And now more than a month later, the city is taking bids to have a crew tear down the damaged heap of steel beams and siding. They're going to cut the walls, separate the walls that are still standing connecting. They're going to cut them down first just, just to separate them. And then, uh, then yeah, whoever wins the bid, when they're available to come in, tear it all out. A special committee will meet next week to make plans to replace the gym with a new building. Let's take our first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Rutt in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We're off to a generally quiet start to the day beyond some snow showers here and there in a couple of locations. More on that in a minute. But we'll start in Watertown on this Saturday morning. 24, a uh, westerly wind at 6 miles per hour. That does put the wind chill at least in the upper teens up that way. Meanwhile, closer to home, here's a view from our downtown camera, 32 not much of a breeze at all at the airport, but a lot of cloud cover. That does gradually dissipate, though, as we head through the day. 19 right now in Mulbridge, 30 for Pier, 15 in Rapid City, 11 for Custer, 23 Spearfish, 33, though, in Spencer, 32 for Yankton and Chamberlain, mid-20s from here on to Marshall in the Ortonville and up toward Aberdeen as well. Winds are tolerable out of the west around 5 to 10 miles per hour, but that breeze is going to pick up as we head through the evening, overnight, and more so into Sunday, where we also keep an eye on the first of several chances for at least some kind of moisture, rain, snow, or otherwise. We'll take a look at that and the rest of your seven-day forecast in a little bit. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance in Sioux Falls is shining a spotlight on veterans with the inaugural Vet Aid SD event. Today's concert is free and open to the public and will feature performances by Danica Michaels and Corey and the Fireflies. And we want to do something that, that celebrates, that has fun, brings people together, and just let them have a good night, host them for free. We've got great bands coming in, great people, and let's just have some fun and celebrate this country. The doors open at 5 o'clock this evening at the Alliance. Danica Michaels will take the stage at 6.30, followed by Corey and the Fireflies at 7.30. Snowmobile racers are competing in the Octane Inc. Snowcross Nationals at Hucett Speedway. The race has started on Friday and will wrap up today. The event attracts racers from all over the world, and that's a late winter boon to businesses in Brandon. I stop for groceries, stop for gas, uh, stop for restaurants, and so it's uh, a very positive thing for us. And the Snowcross Nationals features snowmobilers soaring 25 feet into the air to land a 100-foot jump. The practice run started at 8.30 this morning, with the competition beginning just after 9 o'clock and continuing throughout the day. Snow and Go is an open house for cross-country skiing and snowshoeing at the outdoor campus in Sioux Falls. The first session is at 10 a.m. to noon. The second session is 1 to 3. Equipment will be provided. The Washington Pavilion is hosting an event celebrating South Dakota's largest industry. Ag Day features an interactive farm display, farm animals, chicks hatching, seed planting, plus virtual games and a free lunch for the first 750 people. Ag Day goes from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
And also at the Pavilion, this is the final weekend to see Guild Hall, an adventure in the arts. It's an exhibit featuring 50 of the country's most celebrated artists. It's taking place in the Visual Arts Center from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday is the final day of the exhibit. Adam? Well, we do have some snow showers out there in portions of central and southeastern Kilgoland, also near Watertown, but not all of it's making its way to the ground, and what is making its way to ground level isn't really amounting to too much. Now, earlier this morning, we had winter weather advisories toward Cherry, Todd, Bennett and Oglala Lakota counties where they saw several inches of accumulating snowfall. So if you're in south central South Dakota, you will want to keep in mind that roads will likely be a bit on the treacherous side. But further east, just some nuisance snow showers and cloud cover, which will gradually get out of here as we head through the rest of your morning as high pressure builds in from Wyoming and northern Colorado. Unfortunately, that doesn't last all that long. Although right now it could be a lot worse. It could be what they're seeing up toward interior parts of New England, a rare snowstorm this season in what has been a pretty uh, mild winter in eastern and northeastern parts of the United States. A far cry from what we've had here, which has been just about the exact opposite. Winter storm watch in place tonight through Monday morning along and north of Highway 12. We'll see uh, several inches of accumulating snowfall likely as we go into the second half of the weekend. In fact, here is the next Seven days, uh, Sunday, Sunday night, and a Monday. You notice that snow hanging in there right along the North Dakota border. Lesser amounts south and east, where we'll likely see a little bit of a rain snow mix above anything else. Then we have a daily chance for some snow showers out west. You notice moisture uh, trying to hang tough out that way. And then we head toward the second half of the week, where everybody gets in on the chance for some snow. We'll watch the developing area of low pressure start to take shape by that point and interact with some chilly air. So keep an eye out for updates on the second half of the week. Uh, we'll also keep an eye out for updates on the short term, where we're still looking at around three to six inches of snow near and north of Highway 12, lesser amounts toward 212 and Highway 14 in Watertown and Brookings, respectively. And then as you head towards south central and southeastern Kelowna, and again, more of a rain snow mix. So an inch, if anything, from Chamberlain to Warnington and the Yankton. Also one to two and two to four inches possible towards Rapid City, Custer and Pine Ridge. Beyond the seven day forecast, odds for below average temperatures win out with that active weather pattern trying to stick around as we head towards the Ides of March. Highs today, though, in the 30s to near 40 to the east, we'll see 40s West River overnight lows under increasing cloudiness. Bottom out in the 20s with snow developing in western Kelloland to the northeast will be in the teens. Your seven day forecast has that rain snow chance on Sunday in Sioux Falls, and we're quiet Monday and Tuesday before we watch the second half of the weekend very carefully. Aberdeen, it's mainly snow Sunday into Monday with several inches of accumulating snow possible before we also watch the second half of the week out that way. In Pier, rain and snow Sunday, then snow showers Monday through Friday. Some days will have a better chance than others as everybody also gets in on a chillier second half of the week. And last but not least in Rapid City, after today, it's basically a daily chance for at least some kind of snow, whether it's a few snow showers on Sunday, or a better chance at snow like in the middle of next week. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to kelloland.com.